Okay, hi everybody, and thank you uh, for letting me speak on this topic. Uh, we're going to be talking about accessibility by design, and uh, I brought my two children along here, and um, they're both disabled gamers who are keen for different types of games at the moment, aren't you all? Okay, Corbin is uh, into his Super Smash Bro at the moment, aren't you, and a bit of Mario Maker. Um, Ava's a bit more Robloxy and things now, moving on to a bit of anime and things like that going through. So before we go, uh, my name is Rory Steele and I'm head of uh, Academy at Digital Jersey. I'm also CTO and DPO and a teacher at a local school called Bolia Convent School. And uh, if you want to know more about the topics I talk about here, just on Twitter, go to Jersey IT Guy and you'll find more out. So, you know, where is Jersey? We're, we're actually in a very strange place here, aren't we? A tiny little island. And uh, we're off the coast uh, of France, in fact, uh, although we're part of the UK or technically the British Isles. Uh, and there's a little kind of view about where we are, just to give you a picture. So tiny little island, but uh, we're one of the fastest internet connected places in the world. Um, so uh, a technology is, uh, I, I believe, at the cutting edge of things. So let's uh, go and have a look. So I remember this game. What do you think about my, my favourite game when I was a child? You like this? So I've been a gamer all my life. And um, I've tried to bring that to my children. And we've been trying to game a lot, haven't we? And one of the things that um, some people in this room don't like doing, maybe me as well, I suppose, is losing in games. Corbin, how do you deal with losing in games? Did you do well, Ava? Mm. Oh, Splatoon is hard, isn't it? So you're finding that difficult at the moment, aren't you? And you used to find the other games uh, that we used to play on my PlayStation quite hard as well, didn't you? So we used to play a lot of unlosable games. And the first one, you know, we tried to play was kind of like the Fortnites, but they weren't really that great, were they? You know, the games where you had to fight people and do things. Everyone knows what Fortnite is and you're desperate to play, aren't you, Corbin? But not quite at the right age yet. Even Ava's not, in my opinion. But there we go. It's a different story for another day. But we found games on the Switch, like Breath of the Wild and other games, while there were bits that were quite hard to do, there were bits where you could just roam around, couldn't you, and have fun. And we enjoyed those kind of games. And early on in Ava's career, we, yes, remember this one? We, uh, Ava's looking embarrassed now. You've got to come in picture. You've got to, you've got to show everybody that lovely face about you doing the, your, your Minecraft. And this was a Christmas tree challenge we did years and years ago. And um, because you could take your time, couldn't you? And you like Minecraft as well, don't you? Because you can spend a lot of time. There's no time pressure on what goes on. And with, with that, um, you know, we moved on to Roblox, didn't you? And you, you like Roblox still as well, don't you? Again, because of the lack of pressure. Oh, that Nyan cat. Oh, we do know it, yes. Still to this day, that annoys me. Nice choice of glasses, Ava. I'm liking those glasses in there. So, you know, we chose games that were very specific to you. And there weren't many, uh, if we're being honest. And as we go through... You know, Ava's tastes have evolved slightly, haven't they? Move more on to kind of reaction videos now and the kind of YouTube-y things that we do because yeah. the limited games. Yeah. yeah. You know, we move on to these kind of things because the games that are limited. Yeah, it's just still, that's one of our better ones. Yeah. And, you know, as we go through these things, you know, even a even Corbin, back in the day, I remember that tiara, you pop up in these videos every now and again, don't you? You remember this, the no laughing game, I remember it. So, you know, we've always been avid gamers and, and that kind of stuff. And one of the things you did, you did win that one, I remember. And one of the things that we always had a problem with, though, is the controllers, haven't we? And the, the hardware, it's quite small, quite precise. And your disabilities mean that, you know, fine control is quite hard to do. So controllers have always been a problem, but we've overcome those. And, you know, I think one of the reasons that I'm speaking here today is because of this controller. Um, it was something I did uh, just over a year ago now. And it was just a little project we did at the weekend because you were finding it difficult to play Breath, Breath of the Wild. And, and you, yeah, of course you. So we decided to try and make something to help out. And when we posted it online, and it became quite viral. There was about five million hits, and you know, you you had your fame, didn't you? And you enjoyed it. Ironically, it was actually your your idea, though, wasn't it, Corbin, to do it? That 
Ava swooped in and claimed all the all the accolades because of that smile that we did. I even had a look at the video a little while ago to remember that it's only a year back. I think you've, you've grown about five years since then, I think, a uh, teenage girl. And that was us being able to play a little bit more easily uh, Breath of the Wild. And, you know, that was really important for us about the hardware. But, you know, we're going to talk more about the software today uh, than the hardware. But we were able to use that Microsoft um, adaptive controller um, and use a little adapter to uh, allow us to, to talk to the switch to do that. So you can, um, you know, hack things apart to, to make other things accessible. And, you know, it was quite, it was quite an, a, a strange event really wasn't it we we got on the tv do you remember the tv crew came round? yeah i remember that and you know the, the the reaction to what we did um just to make things more accessible was was really important and, and um you know i still remember that it's you know our, our five minutes of fame there and, and everything went through the roof now if I was to look back at how that happened, um, I, I thank Bryce Johnson, who, who was actually the, the co-inventor of the Xbox Adaptive Controller, a um, really important person. And, and he was just helping me out, or, or some kind words, as well as Aaron Smith, who works for Microsoft Education UK and, and some other disability uh, groups, like the Dyslexia Show and the uh, SEND Group, Special Education uh, Needs and Disabilities Group. Um, and, you know, everyone needs a little bit of an influencer to get things uh, out there. And uh, Scott Hanselman has... Uh, was key in just uh, getting things out there and then it really kicked off when Phil Spencer got behind his team at, uh, at Microsoft so you know personal joys for me which I don't think you care about or you care about was um, you know while the media stuff was great for you and you know we, we went across the world I think with, with these things um, I got a, we got a shout out from George Takai who's Sulu from from Star Trek not that you care about that but I absolutely loved it Mark Hamill himself Luke Skywalker gave it a like which was a you know what more could I ask for there and it even got mentioned by royalty in a year's uh, event and we had to get up super early for super punch do you remember that uh, the American uh, gaming show and you know it was a great experience for everybody and you know we also had to I also had to use uh, Google Translate a lot to try and help other people out who had similar problems and just point them in the right direction for the equipment that I used um, and you know accessibility that, that hashtag went through the roof on that day uh, than it normally did so it, it was great to get that kind of accessibility message out there and the fact that you can with very limited budget uh, make things that, that are really easy to use and you know change my, my followership I, I've got a lot more American uh, followers now and and hopefully we can help out people to uh, bring in like like my daughter and my son uh, gaming going forward and it was really interesting to watch all the tweets go all across the world live at the time and you were super excited about that weren't you when you went through uh, Ava even did remember all the interviews we got magazines and interviews in different places across the world and it was great like I say to see accessibility really recognized and the importance of it um, what was also uh, important was Corbin that was we made you one didn't we so Ava had her controller and it was only fair that we we got it together and we adapted it uh, for uh, the wheelchair there and using very limited parts very inexpensive um, it's just the Xbox adaptive controller that makes it all work to be fair um, and you know it was able you know to to make these games uh, just that more uh, usable because of the time restrictions which is what we're really going to talk about now so you know, we're going to talk about the need for speed and I'm going to talk about some other stuff uh, going forward. And, you know, before I go into detail with this and I'm, I'm going to lose my two kids before my leg goes numb here, Corbin, when you're, when you're speaking. And, uh, you know, you've had your, your time here and I'm going to go into the real nitty gritty of what I think the details are. Ava's shocked that I'm going to boot her out of this instantaneously. But, but the real issue comes down to the need to speed. All the games that we look at, Corbin um, and Ava, um, the reaction times is, is the big issue, isn't it? Like, uh, Corbin absolutely loves Splatoon and um, uh, Super Mario and um, Super Smash Bro. But Super Smash Bro, again, and Splatoon requires some quite tricky um, time-based reactions. And you were, quite, you were a bit the same, weren't you, in, with some of your games? You really wanted to get into it, but, you know, we ended up with kind of Animal Crossing and stuff like that, didn't we, where we could take our time. But the selection of games that, that were time-based is, is vastly superior to those that aren't. And would you like to see a change in games so you could take your time? 
Would you like that as well? Or even just options where you can actually switch off a reaction base and there can be um, allowances made. It's really important because they love playing the games that their peers play. I mean, you love Splatoon, don't you? You want to play with other people, the ranked battles and everything like that that you do. And you'd like to play a few more anime games that, that yeah, do that. Exactly, yeah. Um, and, you know, that you know brought us on to this selection, didn't it? Remember when we were looking at this? Um, Ava's loving anime on, on uh, Netflix. My Hero Ones, yeah, yeah, your favorite, that, isn't it? And when we looked at that, it was it was basically a, a beat-em-up that required lots of reaction time. And, you know, I, I don't think it, it was going to be easy for Ava to play. And Ninon Kuni, I'm probably getting that uh, wrong. But again, yeah, I am. <laughs> yeah, I'm being told. Um, and that, again, had so many reaction-based things on that, you know, we, we're, we're reticent to buy it. But we found um, Stein's Gate, which was a, an interactive novel, didn't we? We had a look at that the other day. And that's just about making decisions uh, to move forward. So zero time implication. And that's really useful for us, isn't it, to have that. And we need to see more games like that. And, and I will get into the detail of it. So more kind of role-playing games with time unlimited uh, or options to be time unlimited is really where we want to be going. So um, we're going to have a little, you know, break and I'm going to talk in more detail about the games and Ava's shocked because she wants to be part of this. But I'm going to talk a little bit more detail about my honest thoughts about about the disability access and, and where it's going. And um, yeah, so we'll say bye for now. And uh, there you go. Bye. You, you're going to have to give it a wave and give it your best pout, Ava. You do like you, you like to give it there. There we go. And we're going to come back and talk uh, more detail about that uh, instantaneously as far as you're aware. And there you go. It was, it was lovely to see uh, my kids and their, their reactions to a lot of what we were talking about. Um, but it's time to get quite serious uh, about the kind of accessibility by design. Um, you know, we, we've talked about it here that, you know, the hardware and everything I think is coming on. And what isn't is the design of games. I've seen lots of accessibility features. You know, I, I play Call of Duty and things like that with my friends online. And you see a lot of the features and, you know, there's a lot of good strides being made by by the gaming companies to make games more accessible. But it's it's the range of accessibility that we're talking about here. You know, um, my son and my daughter, you know, uh, talk quite freely about it now they're not here um their condition is hereditary spastic plegia and it's a degenerative disease so while they're able and, and corbin particularly is able to play a, a kind of uh, super smash bro game at the moment just by mashing the keys and you know he's persistent enough that he'll play a hundred times until he wins by pure fluke in some some cases um my daughter has lost that ability to even play the, mo the kind of most rudimentary of, of reaction based games and her precision um is of such that even the controller doesn't help so much but you know what she she was really great and we go back to these slides and i'll talk about them in a bit more depth now that i can be more honest without them being here is you know minecraft absolutely phenomenal game and you know in so many ways educationally creatively but accessibility wise you know she had multiple different controllers still does play it it's one of her go-to games that she will still go back to and you know, it's just the amount of time that she can do. It might take her, you know, 10 times as long to build something, but she gets the same joy that, you know, when she does a video like this that may have taken her, I think it did take us most of the day to do, that, you know, you saw the joy in her face by doing it. It's it's there and it's unlosable. You know, you, you, you can get onto creative, um, sorry, survival mode, of course, but creative mode allows her to fly anywhere she wants to go, do things, uh, and it still gives her that accessibility. And she was able to talk about it with her friends. She was able to, you know, participate without her feeling any different. Because with Minecraft, you know, everyone's kind of locked away in their, their self. She, she was too young to go on the servers. And, you know, she was producing things that she was really proud of. And, you know, gaming doesn't have to be about, you know, that winning all the time. Uh, you know, and I don't mean that in some sort of woke way and participation awards. I mean, you know, this creativity, the whole, the whole basis of this game is so fundamental to the joy that she got out of it that, you know, I, I just want to see more of it. And, you know, 
you, I think Roblox did, uh, you know, kind of follow suit with her. And while she'd done the, the creative things and she'd kind of run her course with that, you know, Roblox, again, added her a much um, more accessible game, one that she could play with her friends. She could collect those points. Um, you know, and as far as I was concerned, she could actually buy a few as well with some Robux. And that was fine with me, you know, because I knew how long and how much time she was putting into collecting those diamonds, to, to doing those things. But she was so proud of her house. You know, she, she really enjoyed it. And, you know, she made me sit through so many of these to watch and, you know, tours of these houses every time she changed it and you know people were asking me about roblox and i was i didn't have a clue i'd just send them on to ava and ava would take them through even to this day now with some of my friends and their younger kids uh, ava will take them as guided tours around and people book in time with her you know so even though her disability is progressive uh, you know she still has these go-to's these things that she will battle beyond them to succeed uh, and these are the games I want to see more of you know she she's put her switch away a bit at the moment uh, she was into Animal Crossing uh, because again that was a game where collection you know just time and effort and you know the issue that she had was there just wasn't that many other games you know her favorite game Roblox uh, just wasn't on wasn't on it you know and that's that's another thing for game game developers I know it's very hard you know console developers but you know there there are the need to get these kind of games on on board with them uh, but i think that's a different conversation so i'll leave that one for now um you know it cuz it, it, it does make a shame for me i mean when we talk about these reaction videos that she does with me it, it's because she's losing the choice of the gaming she loves gaming she absolutely thoroughly enjoys it and it's just depressing that she's kind of run out of the games to play. And that that's sad for me because, you know, I wouldn't want to play the same game for years on years on years. Um, you know, it's just, that's the nature of gaming, isn't it? You want to move on to the next good thing. But the number of games that come through that are truly accessible without this time constraint reaction precision that, that so so much dogs them in their particular disability and many others, um, that, that's what's, what's a worry for me going forward. And while I see games becoming more accessible with their controllers, I want the whole game to be more accessible. It's a very selfish view and probably not profitable, I'll be honest with you. But, you know, that I've been on here to talk about this kind of stuff and that's exactly what I'm going to do. Um, you know, when we when we go through and talk about the hardware, that's actually where I see the positivity. I've, me I've mentioned there that when I was playing Call of Duty, I saw all the new accessibility features and, and other things, you know, with aim controllers being a bit more forgiving uh, and that kind of stuff, you know. But, you know, they couldn't use an aimbot they'd be banned from the servers, wouldn't they? And, you know, I, I think you should be able to apply for that to say, you, you know, you, you're not monetizing it, you're not doing it, you're not going on Twitch, you're not putting it on YouTube, but an aimbot would significantly help them. But I'm not going to risk them, um, you know, getting banned from one of their servers and things. So, you know, people need to think a little bit less about how people are going to cheat the game using accessibility and more about accessibility and the people using those games so you know one of the things that came up when we made the controller was oh shouldn't nintendo have done that you know i said well well no there's an adapter so you can use the xbox uh, adaptive controller for it why would you need to i prefer it if they came up with something else but there's no point in emulating something that already exists because as i said at the time when, when we were going through that process kudos to to microsoft you know it can't be profitable to make the the xbox controller under 100 pounds hundred dollars even um it just can't be they can't they can't be the market for it surely um so you know that is truly something that they've decided to do themselves and you know not worry about that profitability just to you know, give the accessibility back so the hardware is getting there and the hardware you can buy i mean it is expensive it always is for for dis disabled controllers and disabled paraphernalia whatsoever anything that connects to my uh, daughter's and son's wheelchair seems to cost an astronomical amount as we all know but at least it exists you know you can get for funding you can apply for stuff you know that it's out there people are thinking about it but game design you know, it, it's following the same formulas that seem to make money a lot of the time. And, you know, is it is it up to the bigger players to make games that are purely more accessible 
and not necessarily profitable. I know <laughs> that sounds, you know, whimsical in, in, in the future, but, you know, with, with, you know, we talk a lot in business that I have, all the community, uh, you know, CSR things and people, companies are willing to give back to the community. And, you know, maybe we need to, to pressure more gaming manufacturers to do the same. I'm not talking about your indie makers. I'm talking about your big names and, you know, that giving back to the community. So I'll get off my soapbox a little bit there. But, you know, I would say the hardware is on a, a stronger trajectory than the software. I think that's my honest opinion about that. Um, and it is this need for speed, this high octane uh, value. And, you know, I've mentioned it a few times, but my son, you know, you saw him pipe up just before. You know, he loves Splatoon. He absolutely loves it. He wants to compete in the um, ranked battles. He, he knows the difference between just playing along and that competitiveness. And, yeah, he needs help to, to compete on that level. And it would be offered to him in real life. There would be precision, precision given. And I suppose there is the worry, you know, the, the gamers, um, the game developers are, are thinking, well, you know, if we make it so easy that you only have to shoot in the ballpark uh, of, of a person to hit them, then it is going to be abused uh, by, by players just to progress through games more quickly uh, and things like that. But I've always found it a, a very odd um, scenario. It's, I think there was a comedian a long time ago that kind of pointed out the, the the kind of issue that I've paid, you know, sometimes up to sixty pounds plus for a game that I don't get access to if I'm bad at it. You know, it's one of those weird things. If I buy a film or rent a film, I get to watch the end of it. You know, that's just what I've paid for. But you don't always with a game. There are games I remember as a child I never finished. And to this day, I want to go back and get some, uh, you know, emulators out there or try as many as I can just to finish them there. You want to finish your games. And the worry for, for my children is they won't be able to. Um, you know, that's just, you know, for, for the vast majority of games, because as the game progresses, so does the difficulty. And, and that's the issue that I have. And it's, it's a very honest one. And it's one that needs to be addressed. So that need for speed you know, and reaction based. I get it. I, I'm one of it. I, I enjoy playing COD and, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm getting absolutely obliterated by teenage kids uh, and I'm in my 40s because they're just better at it, faster at it. And, and I take that on the chin because I, I'm on an equal footing. I, if I want to put the time in or able to put the time in, I could. But for my children and for people with disabilities, whether we, we're talking out the box here about some sort of gaming disability code that you have to apply for um, that's uh, attached to your account, you know, we've got to think a little bit better about how we make games more accessible, the mainstream ones, because they don't particularly, you know, while I've said it'd be great to have a, a range of games, they also want to try and play the games their friends are. They want to join in. They want to play online. You know, I'm a 40 year old man and I still like to go on to play Destiny 2 with my friends. And, you know, many of them are, uh, you know, some of the lawyers, some of are, some are other, other jobs. And we still enjoy that playing with our friends. And that's all they want to do. But they need help, you know. And I know that I would play with my son on a game like Destiny, but we wouldn't get anywhere because we require everybody to do their part and based on that reaction. So, yeah, there's, there's you know, there's got to be something in the game, some form of verification to make sure that it's not abused as a as a facility um you know because obviously there's, there's lots of money in e-gaming and stuff like that but let's not not think about that let's not let that be the reason for not letting accessibility move forward more quickly um and that's where i come to these kind of rpg games you know i'm i'm a I'm a diehard for Final Fantasy VII. You know, I it was one. It was still, I I think, you know, when I was I was about twenty at the time, something like that. And it's still one of my favorite and most endearing memories of gaming. I've got my classics back in the day, you know, with my Lemmings and the games for their Commando and um, go some Goblins and Gauntlet. I could go out and say say loads of games out there. Um, but as a as a kind of young adult gamer. Final Fantasy was was my favorite and it did take away an element of time you know um it wasn't as much pressure but there was some pressure if you stalled too much then the you know the the game would think you're not taking your turn and it would do something else but there's no reason why that couldn't have been switched off so that your turn was completely and utterly 
unlimited. There was, there was absolutely no reason why that couldn't be the case. Um, as a <clears throat> an abled gamer, I wouldn't switch that off because I wanted the thrill of, of doing that. And I, you know, I wouldn't just switch that off because it would just make the game too easy for me. And but it's not like that for my son and my daughter. They want time to make the decisions and they want time, you know, to, to do it. So, yeah, it, it's a thing that has to happen. And, you know, they love accruing points. And those kind of games, you know, the, the phone has become, you know, my daughter's go-to gaming device and my son is getting there now as well. Those games that are just going around and around and collecting points and they, they try and get you to buy the diamonds to progress further and faster. But they're not bothered about that. They don't mind actually taking forever to complete the game because they need the extra time. So, you know, I, th I think it's it's a missing market for for um, game developers to, to not make their games more accessible by the flick of a switch, the taking away of something like the, the unlimited gain options and stuff like that. So as a small child, and, you know, kind of to go back and look at a summary of all of this as small children they needed unlosable games uh, i still remember a game it was called mars rover something weird i found a uh, really really old game on the mac and all it was was them just going around this kind of marsy world just doing nothing just going around really fast going off cliffs bounding down you couldn't destroy the thing and there wasn't even a, a point to it, I don't think, this game. Um, it was just some sort of simulation. And they loved it because they didn't die. And they loved it because they, they, they felt like they were achieving something because they weren't doing that. Now, as they get older, they want a more challenge. And that's where the Minecraft creativity, the Robux came in. But it wasn't a challenge, remember. Those are still accruing things games. So when you come to, you know, as my daughter's getting to her age now and she wants to play these anime games, she, I'm looking at the RPGs and I just want her to be able to take as much time as she needs before the, the next turn. Uh, my son has even turned to like Warhammer, like the actual games, the physical games, because we can just spend some time, roll a couple of dice, wait until everything's done and then move when he's ready. And I just feel a shame that the gaming experience for them is, is slowly dying because the games that they want to play are reaching a higher and higher bar each time. And th that's what I'm saying. And, you know, I'm kind of coming around the circle. So I am, I am going to wrap that up. Uh, and just as a plea uh, to the game developers to think a little bit more creatively about how the games and reaction times can be counted for accessibility. It's great that you're putting all these features in to make the controllers more accessible, uh, you know, auto repeat buttons, stuff like that, moving the controllers around, you know, that's all fantastic. And, you know, don't take this as one long <laughs> kind of slagging off of, of, of the gaming industry. It, it's just not that. It, it's just, you know, if you're not living it and I'm not seeing my kids every day, you're just not aware of it. It's as simple as that. And, it, the plea is just think about those switches and if you're worried about your game because it's a big a big market game you know people abusing that facility to move further in the game then let's think about some sort of disability passport that you can get attached to your id uh, you know because everything's connected from the internet these days there's th that you then get an ability to to do that or some sort of fob that you have that is registered you know I, there are many many different digital solutions to that that's not what this conversation's about this conversation's about making that happen so you know my kids love gaming there are things out there for them limited as they are but there are things so kudos to everybody that's that's helping that and making that go forward uh, let's just challenge uh, people to think more about um, the kind of physical issues not just the, the hardware let's inbuild and as we said before Let's build accessibility by design into these games. Thank you very much for listening to me. Uh, I hope it's resonated with a few of you. And thank you once again for letting me have this time with you. Bye now.